Good morning, Devon. It's 7 o'clock on Friday the 19th of August. I'm Michael Checker. A landmark victory is how it's being described. A Torquay man's won a disability discrimination case against one of the UK's biggest companies. Louise Mitchell is in the newsroom. Paul Bailey, a patrolman with the AA, suffered discrimination at work after he developed type 1 diabetes. An employment tribunal found that the AA had subjected Mr Bailey to discrimination and harassment as a result of his disability. I hope they've learnt from this. I mean, you'd probably think, well, I can expect it with a small company who doesn't really have a lot of training, a lot of staff, not even a HR department, but of course the AA's got all that. Paul Maloney is from the GNB union. This case for diabetes is a landmark case. In my 30 plus years involved with the GNB union, we have not had a case that has had to go to an employment tribunal and had such a clear and unequivocal outcome. In a statement, the AA says it will take on board the comments from the employment tribunal and work with Mr Bailey to reach a satisfactory outcome. Devon. BBC Radio Devon. It's 7.05. It's being described as a landmark victory. An AA patrolman from Torquay has won a disability discrimination case against his employer, which of course is one of the UK's biggest and best known companies. Paul Bailey, who still has his job, was in the top 100 patrolmen in the country when he developed type 1 diabetes a couple of years ago. An employment tribunal found that the AA had subjected Mr Bailey to discrimination and harassment as a result of his disability. With me now is Paul Maloney from the GMB union. Paul, how unusual is this case? This is um, indeed a very unusual case. Um, you know, the, the GMB has represented the people in the AA for, uh, for, the, for the duration of the AA, effectively. But we now find that um, the AA, by the way, with the GMB, had um, secured a, a, an award from the TUC for their work with people with disabilities. But uh, to win a case of disability for, on diabetes nowadays is, is very unusual case because most employers recognise the effects of diabetes. But unfortunately, the A in this instance choose to sack people uh, if they get any sort of disabilities and uh, fair play to, to Paul Bailey stood up and said, I am not going to be bought out. The A tried to buy him out and tried to buy him off and pay him off and bully him out the door. He said, no, I've got a disability and you cannot buy the Disability Act. Now, now you said they, they tried to sack people with disabilities. We've no evidence that it's happened to people with other disabilities, have we? Oh, indeed. Um, for the past five years, the A has been selecting people with disabilities, people who's had a kidney removed, people who's had cancer treatment, people who's had injuries caused by their work at the roadside. Is they've been selected and they've been pushed out the door and a gagging clause signed so that they can never speak about it. I is that not the case because they are no longer physically able to do their job? Indeed, they're like Paul Bailey. They're a very perfectly able-bodied people now physically able to do, to do their job. This all came about since the AA was bought over by private equity and they, and they have now uh, drained the company of its resources and they are £4.6 billion pounds in debt, and they are now sweating the workforce to try and make them pay back the same as what the bankers are doing to the nation. Okay, okay, Paul, th those are clearly your views, and we've not seen evidence to suggest that people with other disabilities have been, have been forced out. Have a listen to this. This is some of Paul's thoughts on his case. It is good, because it makes me feel now that it was worthwhile, and if I can help anybody else that's in my position and there are reading the forums there are a lot of people in a similar position to me and i'm hoping now this will set a precedent and you know they can stand up to themselves and know that you know you don't have to be bullied out of work because of a disability you can stand up to people and the law will protect you what message is there here for other employers the message for other employees is the message that the gmb has been clearly given to them stand up against a bullying employer uh, as you and I speak now, there are people in the A who are being bullied out in the same way as Paul. Paul Fairplay has stood up for himself, and I am giving the same message as Paul has given to other A employees. Stand up against a bully employer and you will win your day. Because the tribunal has now rightfully identified and rightfully applied the law and the protection of employees in this instance. And I am so pleased for Paul and I'm so pleased for the, for the remainder of the people working in the A. Paul Maloney from the GMB, thank you again. That's obviously Paul's opinions. We've not seen evidence of other people being forced out of the AA, but this is the case we're talking about this morning of Paul Bailey. He's an AA for...
Coleman, who's won a disability discrimination case against his employer. He's one of the UK's biggest and best-known companies. We did invite the AA to appear on Good Morning Devon today. It has declined that opportunity, but instead has issued a short statement, which reads as follows. It says it takes the comments on board from the Employment Tribunal, and it goes on to say it takes its responsibilities for diversity issues very seriously and is working with Mr Bailey to reach a satisfactory outcome. And it points out that he is still working for the AA. It's 7.10. See Radio Devon. Michael Checker. 7.38. More now on our top story. It's being described as a landmark case. An AA patrolman from Torquay has won a disability discrimination case against his employer, which of course is one of the UK's biggest and best known companies. Paul Bailey, who still has his job with the AA, was in the top 100 patrolmen in the country when he developed type 1 diabetes a couple of years ago. An employment tribunal found the AA had subjected Mr Bailey to discrimination and harassment as a result of his disability. Initially they were very good. I had to take a few months off because my eyesight suffered. Obviously I had to get used to the new regime of taking insulin. Basically it was just learning as I went along to start with. I was put on day shifts um, and then it was just see how I go really. I was having hypos because I take insulin. And um, that means you lose, lose consciousness? Not consciousness but when my blood sugar levels drop to below four I start to shake. I, I, I'm not really with it. You need time to recover from that, and that's basically what my problem was. I was still having those, and the AA were worried about that, I think. And also, my performance had dropped because I had to take a more measured approach to my work. You'd be previously been in the top? Yeah, I've always been a good performer in the company, but obviously once I was diagnosed, I couldn't keep up with that anymore. So, uh, what happened? They started to look at my performance. It's quite a complex chain of events but it, it culminated with them offering me three months salary to leave or be put on an improvement plan which I wouldn't pass which I refused. What did you think about that? I wasn't happy at all with that. I didn't ask to get diabetes. I've always tried my best with everything I do and morally I thought that was wrong. It was a silent disability. You can't see it. It felt like I don't know as if they thought I was you know making it up which obviously I wasn't. Now so. you went through three grievance procedures with the AA and uh, eventually it, it culminated in taking your case to tribunal. Yeah, yeah. Why, why did you feel you wanted to take it that far? I think the, the grievance hearings were frustrating for me because everything I'd said all along was the truth and nobody was listening to me within the company. So after everything that had happened and, and the effect that this was all having on my health, on top of the diabetes, I had the pressure of this, I wanted justice and, and I thought this is wrong. I don't believe anybody should be treated like that. And I wanted it to go to court. So you basically won. They, would, they had been found to discriminate yep. against you on grounds of your disability. They hadn't made adjustments. You must be pleased with that outcome. Yeah, very pleased. It was a unanimous decision. I won on 18 charges. So it, it wasn't a close thing. It was an, an absolute win, which is brilliant. It's brilliant for anybody in my position who's working for a company and is feeling pressure that you can actually stand up to a company of that size if you're right and come out of it with a win like that and yeah it, it's great morally I've, it, it, it was my main reason for doing it Paul, ba for that. Paul Bailey speaking to Sophie Pierce we obviously wanted to speak to someone from the AA about this but we were told no I've got a short statement, though, which says the AA will take the comments on board from the Employment Tribunal. It goes on to say it takes its responsibilities for diversity issues very seriously, and it's working with Mr Bailey to reach a satisfactory outcome, and adds that he's still working for the company. And at 8.05 this morning, I'll be speaking to the MP for Torbay, Adrian Sanders, who also has diabetes, to hear what he thinks about the case. Morning, Devon. BBC Radio, Devon. It's 8.05. It's being described as a landmark case. An AA patrolman from Torquay has won a disability discrimination case against his employer, which, of course, is one of the UK's biggest and best-known companies. Paul Bailey, who still has his job with the AA, was in the top 100 patrolmen in the country when he developed type 1 diabetes a couple of years ago. An employment tribunal found that the AA had subjected Mr Bailey to discrimination and harassment as a result of his disability. Well, with us now is the MP for Torbay, Adrian Sanders, who also has diabetes. Mr Sanders, what do you think of what happened to Mr Bailey? Well, I'm delighted that Paul has won his case and he's done it independently of needing even his MP. So I think all credit to him. It is an important case and there's a certain irony that the company that 
advertises itself as the fourth emergency service actually didn't look at what the other emergency services do when faced with somebody who uh, admits to having diabetes or declares that they have diabetes. And there, after a long battle, Diabetes UK, the all-party parliamentary group for diabetes that I chair, back in 2006-07, uh, actually managed to get codes of conduct agreed by all the emergency services that an employee would be subjected to an individual medical assessment and wouldn't be automatically banned from their job or indeed uh, made redundant, as has been the case in the past. Let's have a listen to what Paul Bailey himself said after winning his case. It is good because I, it makes me feel now that it was worthwhile and if I can help anybody else that's in my position, and there are, reading the forums, there are a lot of people in a similar position to me, and I'm hoping now this will set a precedent and, you know, they can stand up to themselves and know that, you know, you don't have to be bullied out of work because of a disability, you can stand up to people and the law will protect you. Adrian Sanders? Well, he's absolutely right. And, of course, the Disability Discrimination Act 2005 uh, is probably what the case was mostly uh, based on. And then, of course, we had the Equality Act in 2010 that uh, firmed up uh, some of the anti-discriminatory practices that were taking place and, 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 and made uh, employers be found out. So I'm delighted that he's won the case, uh, backed up by law that wasn't there uh, ten years ago that uh, I'm very glad to see is there. And I think any employer who's worried about an employee who has diabetes, whether it's type 1 or type 2, they are, it is a serious condition, but modern treatment regimes mean that you can control it. And you can control it in a way that does not make you a danger to yourself or to anybody else. And indeed, you shouldn't be treated any differently than anybody else. The crucial role is that if you are in an occupation where there could be a risk, um, driving perhaps, uh, being a pilot of an aeroplane or whatever, um, then maybe there is a need for medical assessment on a regular basis just to ensure that you are controlling the condition. And I don't think anybody disagrees with that, either who has the condition or, or people who don't. Good morning, Devon. Asked the AA for an interview this morning. We were told no, but they did give us a short statement which says it'll take the comments on board from the Employment Tribunal. And it goes on to say it takes its responsibilities for diversity issues very seriously and is working with Mr Bailey to reach a satisfactory outcome. And it points out he is still working for the AA. Adrian Sanders, do you think that diabetes is taken seriously enough as a potential disability by employers? Well, it, it's both a serious condition, but it is also a condition that can be controlled. And modern uh, uh, treatment regimes and modern insulins and insulin pumps and uh, new diets for people with type 2 and, and tablets that have been developed for people with type 2 diabetes who don't require insulin injections... Uh, all of these advances make it easier for people to control that condition. And therefore, whilst it is a very serious condition, uh, it's extremely serious if it's not controlled, it is easier to control. And therefore, uh, employers shouldn't be concerned if, if their employee uh, announces that they have this condition um, and demonstrates that it's clearly under control. Adrian Sanders, MP for Torbay. Thank you. It's